Using formula queries, we can gather data from across our app into a single metrics table. Welcome to QuickBase Junkie. I help QuickBase builders learn fast to deliver more. For this easy metric table demo, this is the table we'll be creating. Every month, our organization wants to gather data on opportunities for that month, plus a running year-to-date total. Along with that information, we also want to know what was the largest opportunity we landed that month and what new accounts did we sign up in that month. To make this easy, we're going to use a bunch of formula queries and absolutely no table-to-table -table relationships. So you can follow along. I'll be using an app from the App Exchange called the CRM Starter. The data we'll be pulling for our metrics table comes from this opportunities table. However, we need to create a brand new table to gather those metrics. We'll start from scratch. We'll call this our metrics table. And for this demo, each record will represent a single month. You may want to look at weekly metrics or even yearly metrics. Just be sure to set this at the lowest level that you think you might want to report on because it's a little harder to move backwards. I'll choose an icon and create my table. The first field we'll need is our month field. This will be a date field and then we'll include our formula fields to gather those metrics. For these last two, these will be text values that get returned in our formula query. Rather than simple text, it'll be based on a formula for multi-select text. That puts that text into those little boxes or pills that you may have seen before. With these fields added to my table, I can start with my very first formula. That'll be my number of opportunities. Let's take a look back at that opportunities table first. Looking at the opportunities table, to count the number of opportunities for that month, I need to know what date I'm using. I'll use the close date for this particular metrics gathering, so anything closed in that month I want to count as part of that record. I'll need the close dates field ID to include in my query. Looking at my fields list, I can easily get that close date. Here in the list, it's number 15. I'll also need the table ID or DB ID for this opportunities table. Well, on any view within the opportunities table, if I look up in my URL, just after the DB slash portion of the URL, there's a nine digit ID for your table. This is my ID for my opportunities table. I'll go ahead and copy this just so I have it in my clipboard. You can also reference the DBID by using the table alias. The table alias can be found in the advanced settings all the way at the bottom where it shows table alias. It's this portion here, including that first underscore. This is placed into a set of square brackets in your formula. Let's go ahead and head back to our metrics table and into that first field for opportunities. To get the count of opportunities for a particular month, we need to pull that list of records using a query. I like to write my queries in variables, so I'll start by defining a variable. Queries are text strings, so it'll have the type of text, and I'll simply call it query. Then I'll set this equal to my query string. Every query is within a set of double quotes and a set of curly brackets. The first element in the query string is the field ID I want to query. So that was field ID 15, which was my close date. So I wanna know, is the close date on or after the first day of the month for this month's record? For this table, I'll be using the first of the month to define my month field. So that'll simply be my month field. And I can close out that query. But not only is it on or after the first of the month, but I also need to say, is it on or before the end of the month? So that way I cover the entire month. So I'll include another query 
with the AND operator. Same field ID 15, only this time it's going to be on or before, and we'll use the end of the month. To get the end of the month, we can use a function called last day of month and just pop our month field in there. And then we just need to join that to the end of our query string, which is that single quote, the curly bracket, and the double quote. So far, our query string consists of any record that matches a date starting at the beginning of the month through the end of the month. What we want to actually do is count those number of records, and that function is called size. It's essentially the size of the record list that is returned from the query. To pull that query, we need to though use a function called getRecords and include our query within it. Along with our query, we do need to specify what table to query. I saved that to my clipboard, so I've popped it right in. I could also use that table alias in place of the DBID. And since we're simply getting the count, that's it. That's all we need for this formula. This format we're going to use over and over a few more times. So I'll go ahead and copy this as well. And we'll jump into our next field. This will be for the dollar amount of those opportunities. Pasting in that same formula, we still want to look for opportunities that match from the beginning through the end of the month. But instead of size, we want to sum the values. We want to sum the amount field. This field happens to have a field ID of seven. So now we're telling it, go get that list of records that matches the same month as the record that I'm on and sum up the values found in field ID number seven, which is the amount. Go ahead and head to our next formula. This is year to date. Starting again with that same formula from the number of opportunities into this number year to date. Only instead of starting at the first of the month, we now want to start at the first of the year for that month. So we can include the first day of year function, right? The first day of the year for that same month through the last day of the month. We want to get the size or the count of records that are returned in that query from this table ID, which is the opportunities table. Go ahead and copy this again into our next formula. This will be our dollars, so that's our sum values, and again, that number seven. Now we've got all of our numeric formulas done. Let's see how we did. On our metrics table, we don't have any records yet, so let's start by adding our first record. All of those opportunities happen to begin in September of 2020. So I'm gonna use the first of the month for each of our records. As soon as I pop that date in, I'm getting results. It's telling me the number of opportunities that were entered for that month, the dollar amount that were entered for that month, the year to date, which is through all the records I have so far. This is the very first one, right? It said all of the records started on this date. So this is the year to date. Go ahead and save that. Head back out to our metrics and I'll simply grid edit here to add in those additional months. And that's as far as this particular data set goes, but as you can see, that information is already adding up for me. Click save. This report is not sorting by the month, so I'll jump in and make sure that we are sorting by month from high to low. Now we can see starting at the bottom in September, we had two opportunities for 285,000 for a year to date total of two and 285. But then the next month we had one more opportunity for 170,000. And now our year to date total is 455,000 and so on. For these two fields, I really do not wanna be totaling because they're already totaling like a running total. And this is money, so we'll go ahead and format that as money. This is money as well. So we're looking at apples to apples. So now we see our total of 1,342,000 that matches our total year to date through December of 1,342,000. 
amazing. Now, while this looks like a running total, I would not consider it a regular running total type report because we are summing off of a different table. If you want to see an example of running totals, check out my video on creating running totals using formula queries. For these last two fields, I needed to create a sort of helper field in order for me to assess what information to pull into my metrics table. To see that, I'll head back to my opportunities table and open a report that I've created. On this report, I've created this field for opportunity number four account. Essentially, this is a running rank of the first, second, third, and so on opportunity that came in for that account based on the close date. We'll take a quick peek at this formula, which looks for records matching that same account that came in before the current records close date, and then adds that to any that happened on the same date, and then uses record ID almost as a tiebreaker if two opportunities came in on the same date for that same account. If you want more information on setting up these rank formulas, check out my video on ranking records using formula queries. Now, since we have this number of opportunities for the account, we can use this in our metrics table, find all the records in that month that had their initial account or first account opened. I'll check first for the field ID for this field to make sure that we can use that in our formula. On my usage tab, I see this is field ID 37, and I'll head into my metrics. This is for my new accounts, so I'll open this field and begin writing my query. We still want to look at those that are contained within the same month, but now we also want to append another query to specify that it was the first opportunity created for that account indicating that we got the account that month. So with this query, we'll be getting that list of records where the very first opportunity was entered for that account within the same month as our metric month. Rather than returning the count or the sum, what we want to do is get the field values for the name of that opportunity. Still pulling in our query using that get records function and the DVID. And then we need to include the field with the value we want to bring back. So that was the account name, which is field ID 8. Go ahead and copy this because we'll use something very similar in our next formula. Now we can see in September we got the account with GE, October IBM, and November with Boeing. Now looking at the largest opportunity that we landed in each of those months, we want to see that opportunity name, but only this is going to be based on the dollars. Going back to our opportunities table, I've got another report. This report is based by month, and I am now ranking the highest dollar opportunity in that month, where this month it was electric infantry, this month it was electric corporals, and then we had machine upgrades and electric emeralds. This monthly rank formula is also using formula queries that look at opportunities that happened within the same month, so on or after the first of the same month as that records close date through the last day of that month, and counts the number of records that have an amount greater than that records amount. To that, we're going to add the second query, which is anything that has the same amount, only now we're ranking or ordering that based on record ID in case there's a tie and two records land on the same ranking. For more information on setting up these ranking formulas, check out that other video I mentioned earlier. This is field ID number 36. So heading back to my formula in my metrics table, jump into this field, paste what I had before, only now I'm looking for 36, the highest ranking or number one in terms of that dollar value, I want to get the field value for that opportunity name field. That's it. Hit save. Boom. 
Now I've got my completed metrics table, counting the number of opportunities for the month, as well as their dollar amounts and those year to date totals. In addition to that, I'm listing out the largest opportunity that we landed for each month and any new accounts that were created for those months. This information also makes it possible to create some pretty cool charts. I'll jump in and show you as well. Using a line and bar chart, set our x axis to the month, our primary values to our year to date dollars, and then our secondary value to our year to date numbers. And now we can see our running year to date totals on this report for each month. Love seeing charts like this up and to the right. That's it for this easy metrics table using formula queries and zero relationships. Nothing super complicated here. Of course, you do need to get those queries written right. For more information on writing queries, check out Query Writing 101. If you like this video, there's a whole lot more going on over at quickbasejunkie.com slash training. And when you're ready, I'll see you in the first lesson. If you found this video helpful, let me know. Hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Bye for now.